Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Says the Vet. Today I'm going to actually teach you the basics of doing an autopsy on lamb to figure out for yourselves what might be happening with those little dead ones that you find in the paddock overnight. Keep in the loop with weekly updates of common diseases that will be hitting your farm at certain times of year by hitting the subscribe button down below. I'll see you in a minute. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Says the Vet. I am Says Your Vet. So today we're going to be addressing the common question of what's going on when you find those lambs, calves, little kids, newborn, already dead in the paddock when you come out in the morning. If you're happy having a look from the outside or even opening one up, you can often get the answer if it's an easy one. So we will walk through that. Now massive disclaimer people, the nature of this episode means there is going to be confronting images of a post-mortem exam. It's what I'm teaching you to do. First thing we need to determine is the time of death. Now we can break this down into three categories. Did this lamb die before birth, during birth, or after birth? And the easy things you can look for here to help you solve the puzzle are, have the lungs inflated, did they take a breath? Are the soft slippers on their feet still intact or have they been worn down? Did they stand and walk? Is there milk clotting in the abomasum telling us that they've had a drink or not? Are there any signs on the body of a difficult labour? Is the yellow staining of the foetus's wool? How much brown fat do they have packed around the organs? Now those are the main things we're talking about. So let's start with the first scenario. If a lamb has died before birth, it died in the uterus, its lungs are not going to be inflated. You can actually cut out a piece of the lung and put it in water and it's going to sink, there's no air in there. If they have come out and taken a breath, it's going to be spongy and it's going to float to the top of the water. Now this lamb that died in the uterus will have soft slippers still on the feet. These slippers protect the uterus on its way out and all of our species carry them, all of the, the hooved species. Now they wear down very quickly once it's stood and walked even just a little bit. So slippers still there means it hasn't stood up. Now this lamb that was born dead will not have milk in the abomasum in the stomach, all right? The stomach will be filled with a thick yellow fluid from it drinking the amniotic fluid inside. Milk looks like clotted milk, you can't miss it. But there is not going to be any yellow staining of the faeces, it wasn't stressed on the way out, generally no swelling of the head or backside to indicate a difficult labour, and there's still going to be brown fat around the heart and the kidneys. Okay, so that's if it was born dead. Now if that's the case, especially if you have multiple, then you're going to be contacting your vet to investigate causes of abortion storms with you and how to protect your flock or herd in the future. There's a number of different things that can cause that. Now the lamb or calf that has died during labour, so due to stress and difficulty getting out, is still going to have intact slippers on the feet, no milk in the stomach, normal levels of fat around the heart and kidneys. He never stood up and he never drunk, okay? He was still born dead. But he may have partially inflated lungs. That depends if he took a breath on his way on, out or not. How quickly did he die? But really what we're looking for with death during or around birth is signs of stress during the birthing process. So yellow staining of the fleece. This tells us that the lamb has pooed on itself during labor from stress. That's not normal. Often what we'll see as well is swelling of the head or around the backside, just telling us that there was a ton of pressure on that little body on the way out. Now death during or shortly after labour is going to be more common in large lambs over 5 kg or in small mums, so breeding too young in heifers for example, or putting big breed bulls over little jerseys, that's another example. So changing your management practices is generally what we're looking at there. Now if this is the case, you'll want to contact your vet to chat you through genetic selection, body condition scoring, how to manage mum's post labour, all the rest of it. And finally, the baby that has died after birth, so it's been born alive, but it failed to thrive. Now this one's a little bit more tricky to tell. So yes, the lungs will be inflated, it was born alive, it took some breaths, it was breathing. The slippers will probably be worn down unless there was a reason he couldn't stand. He may or may not have milk in the stomach, depending whether or not he made it as far as finding the teat. But what we will often see, and a key thing to look for, is a lack of brown fat reserves around the heart and kidneys. Now brown fat is the newborn ruminant's emergency supply of easily accessible fat to keep him warm for those first few hours while finding the teat. If all that fat has been used up and there's nothing there anymore, then we're looking at what we call starvation hypothermia syndrome. Now starvation hypothermia syndrome is where the animal dies from hypothermia or starvation, generally both in a chicken and egg kind of situation. So small lambs, calves and kids are usually weaker and have poor cold tolerance, less likely to get their first drink. 
prematurely young, have very poor ability to regulate their own body temperature. Basically, that newborn needs to stand and get a big belly full of warm colostrum in the first four hours to be able to maintain blood sugar and body temperature. An ice cold, starving little one will burn through all their fat reserves very quickly and that's what we're seeing on exam when that brown fat's gone. But the question here is, why didn't they stand for a drink? Mismothering, rejection, were they born in a snowstorm and got cold too quickly? Some answers are easy, some are not, and that's where your vet will come in. All right guys, congratulations on completing your crash course in newborn post-mortem exams. Remember, this is just the first step to figuring out what's going on. You might get an easy answer, or you might need to call your vet for some follow-up work to get to the bottom of it. All right, we're gonna leave it there. Please don't forget, go ahead and subscribe down below to catch the next episode. Jump over to the YouTube channel to leave any comments or ask questions, that way I will see them and I can jump on and answer those questions for you. Hope this has helped. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share if you think someone else will make use of it as well. And I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.